It's really such a pleasure being with you here today. It's so uh, both nostalgic and emotional for me that this is where my intellectual life was uh, was started, and yeah. I I owe it all to you. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah, I remember you well, Bob. Uh, you were an outstanding student. Well, it was uh, it was really really marvelous, and the career you've had has been uh, a spectacular. Uh, the work that you've done yeah. and really anatomy and brain science uh, it's really uh, it's really been a pleasure and and it really is terribly relevant to me now because really for my entire life even though I've done some other things in business and various things of course, uh, of course. the mind body problem has always been at the core of yeah. of, of what drove me what made me passionate and I've yeah worked with many philosophers and scientists from different perspectives, but people always focus on the mind part yeah. and trying to understand that. But uh, what about the body part? This is something that you've spent your whole life with. Yeah, it's a very important uh, uh, subject because all medical students must know uh, the intimate details of the human body. Mm -hmm. And the mind, the brain, which is the uh, home of the mind, mm -hmm. Uh, controls both the sensory input and the motor output uh, to and from uh, various aspects of the human body. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we uh, have a, a course in anatomy here that uh, goes through all aspects of, uh, uh, of uh, human morphology. And uh, our medical students today uh, don't quite get the number of hours of anatomy that they did maybe 10 or 20 years ago. However, their focus is a bit different. The focus is teaching the basic science subjects such as anatomy or physiology in relation to the human problems and mm. the human condition. So uh, our curriculum is quite different today from what <laughs> it was when you were a student. I've been so honored to know that over the years the professor who brought me into brain research, to which I will be indebted to you for my entire life, has written and edited the leading books in the field of anatomy. Uh, you are the editor of Gray's Anatomy, the current edition, regional atlas of your own, and a, 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 a dissector for medical students. Uh, I, I have known this, but I'd love you to catch me up after four decades <laughs> on all the magnificent work you've done. Well, <laughs> I'd be happy to tell you about these books because Hen Henry Gray was a, an English uh, physician who worked at Guy's Hospital, and in 1858, mm. he produced the first edition of Gray's Anatomy. And uh, the book uh, then was uh, uh, given to a company in the United States in Philadelphia. Uh, Lee and Fabiger, and they were given the rights of selling that book it, to the Western Hemisphere. Uh, uh, and what happened was that the American edition has now gone through 30 editions, of which this is the 30th. The English edition has gone through a few more, I think 36 now. Uh, but uh, the American edition of Gray's Anatomy was used by every medical student in our country at least from the mid 1890s mm. on through to about 19, I think 1960 or 65. Today we use shorter books because the amount of time we have in teaching anatomy is is, uh, is fewer. But this book is an exceedingly complete description of each part of the body, along with all the vessels, all of the nerves, all of the muscles and all the organs. The definitive reference. I think today it is. Uh, it is uh, Gray's Anatomy is the definitive reference. Now this book is an atlas of human anatomy. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is a series of color photographs done by outstanding anatomists uh, uh, and artists, uh, which uh, describe various areas in the body uh, shows all the muscles, all the blood vessels, and all the nerves. A student has this alongside of his cadaver and uh, uh, attempts to create a dissection comparable to what uh, he can see, he or she can see in, in the book. And in fact, in this particular book, uh, we have a, a sequential order 
of uh, figures. For example, this area shows the liver, and these are all figures of the liver, and it shows where the liver is in in the uh, uh, in the body. So, the book is uh, uh, a help to medical students. And what I have done, in addition to adding figures to it, is to write all the notes uh, and all the labels uh, of these figures. What a magnificent work. And this, this particular book is a dissector. Uh, what this book does is uh, describe each of the dissections that a student must do uh, in his course in anatomy. And in red, these are the things that the person specifically must do during the dissection of this region. This happens to be of the pelvis, as you can see. And then the other description here is elaboration of the anatomy of the region that they're dissecting. So this is a dissector and... Uh, uh, How many different sections would there be? 38. There are 38 dissections in this. And, uh, uh, these two books are now used in many medical schools, not only in America, but in Europe and in Asia uh, and in South America. It's been, uh, several have been translated as well. So, yeah, these are... This is the thing a professor does, especially when they get a little older. Uh, well, they it's sit a, and uh, do a lot of writing. It's a magnificent uh, contribution, and really, it's a, it's it's a catalog of what it means to be human. Well, that's a nice uh, a nice way of putting it, I think.